current within the sound of my voice. Are you ready for some bronze metal action between Simone and Ben and Lindsay and Riley Newman? Quick request. If you're over on the, to my right, could you come over to the bleachers on the left? It's a better view and you'll help our broadcast look even better. Let's cheer on this bronze medal match here at PBA Mesa. Thanks so much for coming over, watching some great pickleball. All right, you are looking at Championship Court once again here at the Mesa Tennis Center. This is a bronze medal match between Riley Newman and Lindsay Newman. They're taking on Simone Jardim and Ben Johns. The winner of this match will go on and play for gold against Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova, who we just saw a few minutes ago out here. And the loser of this match The loser of this match will get the bronze medal. I'm your host, Mark Renison, and we see that quick exchange at the net. One thing to take note of is Simone and Ben just came off the court playing a tough three-gamer against Kovalova and Wright. The Newmans have been off for a while. They were sitting, they were watching what was going on, so they definitely got to uh, do a little scouting beforehand. But it is getting cold here in Mesa. And uh, gotta wonder whether that time off, sitting down. Lindsay takes a full swing at that backhand drive. Wow. That ball just barely catches the line. Both Newmans call that ball in. Three zero one. Johns and Jardim off to a good start here. It's going to be an around the post attempt. Wow, Newman is so aggressive. Side to side to side. It's one of the reasons why pickleball is mainly about moving as much as it is about hitting the ball. See a great example of Newman putting so much pressure on his opponents because he can cover so much territory so quickly. There's another example of Riley trying to cover a lot of territory. I think they're expecting that most of these balls are going to be hit to Lindsay. 
And by jumping the corner like that and being aggressive, that's one way that Riley can start to get his paddle on the ball a little bit more often. But it does come with its risks. Three zero one. Andre Paul asking if I did in fact say it's cold. It is cold. I had to put on a hoodie and everything. Might have to break out the vest. I am still wearing socks though. Uh, you know, we're here in the desert and uh, in the evening this time of year, it can get a little frosty. Earlier in the week, it was down below freezing early in the morning and through the night. There we go. That is a patented Lindsay Newman move there to set up on the extremity of the court, really looking for that forehand that she can pounce on. Riley very good at coming over and covering the middle of the court as a response. All right, since we started this stream as a new one, be sure to hit that share button. That way your friends can catch the great action here too. This bronze medal match followed by the gold right afterward. Zero three two is the score. Ben Johns crossing in front of his partner, Simone Jardim. Say welcome to Abby Brooks, no slouch of a pickleball player herself. First time actually I saw Ben Johns in action it was in Southwest Florida a number of years ago and he was out there playing with Mrs. Brooks. With that side out, Lindsay Newman will take over serving. 1-3-1. One, one. All right, and that banging that you might have heard was the door to the broadcast booth. <laughs> and uh, they'll let any sort of riffraff in here, it seems. I am moderately pleased to welcome back to the booth a man who needs no introduction and the senior pro gold medalist in the mixed doubles from earlier today, Mr. Dave Weinbach. Thanks for having me back, Mark. It was a joy to play on this center court here at the Mesa Tennis Center, and we are in for a treat here in this bronze metal match. I take back calling you Riff Raff. <laughs> After that gold medal performance, maybe we'll just call you Raff. Well, I had the right partner today. Chris Anderson is a monster. Oh, there we see some great coverage there by Riley Newman, who is long and length. I can tell you, I played about 15 rec games with Riley Newman this week before the tournament started, and we had a lot of fun. And that man covers a lot of ground. And he just keeps getting better and better and better. I, I still think the ceiling for him has got some ways to go. People forget, Mark, how new Riley and Lindsay are to pickleball. They have not been around for too long, and I just think their potential is to be, you know, top three players in the country. Yeah, and one of the reasons I think, you know, as any any close siblings will know is that, you know, having grown up with someone your whole life, um, there is this kind of nonverbal communication, this sort of second nature that uh, is so clear between the two. And you can see when you watch these two play how well they cover the courts, how, how well they read sort of, you know, both tactically what each other are planning on doing, but also um, sort of psychologically and emotionally what each other needs when they're out there. And, uh, you know, whether that's on the timeouts that they sit 30 feet apart from one another, <laughs> not speaking to each other, 
Um, it is interesting, the dynamic between the two. Yeah. I think they've known each other since birth. Yeah. Well, at least since one of their births. <laughs> Ben That's Johns, yeah, great, great defense. Great one-two punch there by Ben. I think when you speed it up to Lindsay or Riley, you have to expect the first ball is going to come back, and you've got to be prepared for the next one. 4-5-1 Four, five, one. Four, five, one here. As Newman catches the line there, wanting to stay away from Johns, he has punished them a little bit lately when they hit the ball to the middle. That does put a little additional risk, though, when you have to play so close to that sideline. Boy, what a great match we just witnessed with uh, Matt and Lucy taking that in three over Simone and Ben to earn them a rest in the VIP Players Lounge. And then they get to wait for the winner of this match. Uh, Riley and Lindsay just get so many balls back. Oh, it's over. Oh, he goes to his left. What? He's going to get this too. Oh wow. <laughs> How wow. entertaining is this? All right, well, uh, Riley catches his breath for about half a second. We're going to remind you that this broadcast is being brought to you by Pro Pickleball Media and their partners Logitech. All the tech knowledge years we're using here to get this great audio video quality it's from the people at Logitech Jardim wins that battle one on one against <laughs> Lindsay Newman Riley a little frustrated he said out way before Lindsay hit that ball but as you know Mark when you're in the point and you're so focused and locked in on that ball it is so difficult to get out of the way we've been talking about this for two days how it's really a skill to know when to let the ball go and it's something you actually can practice look how far Rowley comes over for that bow he loves that two handed backhand roll cross court dink oh, oh great almost as much as Ben Johns loves the backhand ATP mm. one of the nice things and many players will know this but Dave sometimes um, uh, you know in the coaching I do sometimes I realize that not everyone knows that when you do hit around the post you don't have to hit higher than the net itself. You can hit as low as you want. That's the huge advantage to doing it. You can hit it six inches over the ground with slice like Ben just did, and the ball doesn't even come up at all, and it makes the next shot almost impossible. I'm not sure that uh, Lindsay wants to get into a cross-court dinking game with Ben Johns, who I personally think is the best cross-court dinker in the game. Riley, Ry Ry Riley doesn't want that pattern to go. <laughs> you know what? I, I think Riley think, agreed with that. Yeah, I, I think there are a few, and I wonder about this. I mean, I haven't taken stats on this yet, but it seems to me like the women are less likely to play around the posts than some of the guys. And so right there, there are a few balls that I'm pretty sure that Ben hit wide enough that could have been ATPs. All right, we're going to take a quick break while these players have a hydration break powered by Jigsaw Health. We'll be back in a moment with more here in this bronze medal match, PPA in Mesa. It's no secret I lose so many electrolytes when I play. Eventually, I either start cramping or I run out of gas. Electrolyte Supreme gives me enough energy and hydration. They prevent cramps, and what's really important to me, they help me to recover quicker. I know I can push myself a little bit more and not have to worry about cramps. I feel better, I feel good, and it's fun to feel good. We're feeling great, we're energized, and we're ready to have a great day, right, Lucy? And it's fun to feel good. That's right. Every pickleball crowd is full of pickleball players, and that's one of the <laughs> things that makes this sport so unique and fantastic. Six five two, we're back with Ben John serving to Riley Newman. Again, he and sister Lindsay will cross. Oh, look how far Ben came over for that. That ball got so low by the time he actually made contact with the ball, I think he made the wrong decision to try to drive it. 5-6-1. K-1 
can't quite come up with the goods there, Lindsay Newman. Uh, we have a question, Dave. You were talking about uh, the skill of, pract of learning when to let balls go out. Can you give our viewers at home like one simple drill, one simple activity they could do to actually practice developing that skill? The drill that I do um, when I have small like groups in private lessons, and I know you do a lot of private lessons as well, is I'll have a bucket of balls and I'll, and I'll have my students at the kitchen line and I'll drive balls at them. And they have to decide, A, is it gonna be in or out? And if it's out, I want them to let the ball go. And if it's gonna be in, I want them to hit a punch volley deep in the court at my feet. So that's one of the drills we work on to help with that decision-making process. That's a great uh, idea. The great yeah. attack shot. While we have a uh, quick moment, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to Casey Clancy in Rogers, Arkansas. Happy birthday, Casey. Good old Casey. Valentine's Day birthday. It's not bad. I bet you get double the love on those days. I don't think this is a pattern that Lindsay should be doing. If I were advising that team right now, I would suggest that she mix that up a little bit, Mark, and uh, once in a while, you know, keep Ben honest. But I don't think she's going to come out on the winning side of that matchup. Ben Johns, can, you can start to feel a little bit, Dave, here. I mean, it's been a long day, right? These players, I mean, the matches started at 10 a.m. The players were out here before that warming up. A number of them were on the court yesterday, right? Either competing or, in the case of Ben, traveling. We're gonna, st we're gonna stay here for a moment while they take this quick break. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, st we're gonna stay here for a moment for this quick break while we um, give a little bit of love to some of the other sponsors that were involved in making this, this uh, particular tournament and this whole tour possible. Onyx Pickleball, Vulcan Pickleball Paddles, Paddle Tech, C&D Pickleball Nets. We saw Cami McGregor earlier out here on the court. She's the CEO of C&D Pickleball Nets, which is the official net of the PPA Tour. Selkirk Sport, Pickleball Central, Third Shot Sports, Pro Kenix, K-Swiss, Creamy's Ice Cream, Durafast 40, and Jigsaw Health. Without these great sponsors, supporters of Pickleball and supporters of the PPA. This amazing tournament and this amazing tour would not be possible. So show those sponsors some love, spend your money with them, or at the very least, send them an email. Let them know how much you appreciate them being part of the PPA tour. Let's see if Lindsay uh, changes up this pattern a little bit. I think that Ben Johns is, is very is getting too active in this. If I were the Newmans, I would try to involve Simone a little bit more. I think he's getting a good rhythm. He's getting a lot of shots. And you don't want to do that to the number one player in the game. I think Simone hit one or two balls in that entire 30-shot rally. 10-5-2, we've got a game point here for Johns and Jardim. That's gonna go wide. That falls a little bit out, the side out. Newmans have a chance to gain a little ground here, down 5-10-1. Along with Mark, this is Dave bringing you this live action here at the inaugural PPA, Professional Pickleball Association event here at the beautiful Mesa Tennis Center. We are not far from the base of the Superstition Mountains. It's just beautiful here. And a perfect day to, for pickleball. The ball can't quite climb its way over the net. Uh, we had another question, which maybe we'll come back to after uh, this game's over. It has to do with changing, like finding partners and those decisions. We'll come back to that after this game right now, Newman and Newman. Wow, <laughs> that's the kind of twinner we hadn't seen earlier today. Oh, great Lindsay with some great defense of her own. Lindsay doesn't know where Riley is and what he's doing, but she recovered. Oh, that. 
Seemed like a bit of a generous call on that a side. A very generous call. We've seen that call all day long happening and players being such good sports if there's any doubt in the fact that there's so many fans right beside it I think maybe a bit of a factor but oh, oh terrific recovery <laughs> DJ Pickles can get, hardly contain himself came in but Lindsay didn't Let's see if she can work her way in here oh! and that ball goes long terrific defense there by both Newmans to keep that point alive sometimes it doesn't really go the way you plan but you've got to find a way you've got to improvise work your way out of a hole Yeah, I think I think they've decided they're gonna try to switch up this pattern a little bit. That ball catches the top of the net and a little bit of a run here. They're still down. This is the bronze match. Of course, the they winner will advance back into the gold match where uh, Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova are waiting in the wings. I thought that ball clipped the line. Did you have a good view it, of that, Mark? It did, and uh, Ben let Simone know that, yeah, it did in fact touch, so that's going to be a point for the Newmans. They're now serving at 9-10-2. What a game. A risky return of serve, quite deep. Lindsay Newman, great defender, but can't quite get that ball back in the court. Too tough from Ben Johns. And once again, we have a game point here. 10-9-1, Jardim to serve. Lindsay jumps the corner. That sets up the opportunity. Riley Newman, so good at coming across, covering the center of the court when Lindsay's off to the side. Lindsay Newman loves to jump that corner when she's on her forehand side, which she usually is when she plays with Riley, but even in women's doubles, she loves to jump it when she's on her forehand side over there. So, so if you're playing against her, you always have to be aware of that. And Simone was not there. There it is again. There it is again. They save another game point, the Newmans do. They get the ball back. They're serving at 9-10-1 here in this best two out of three. Simone's got to be careful match. on that dink down the line. There's nothing wrong with going down the middle, people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As I like to say, issues. <laughs> that ball sits up a little bit too high. Ben Johns, one of the strongest players on the backhand side. 9-10-2. Newmans would love to get a free point here, and they do. Ooh, got a little greedy on that return, did Johns. 10-10-1. Remember, this is you must win by two. So the first team to get a two-point lead here will win game number one. I love how Riley closes to that kitchen line after his third ball. Can't get that ball back in place. So much spin off the paddle of Ben Johns when he hits those forehands and backhands, frankly. All right, we're going to take a quick break as well. We're going to come back to this game, the conclusion of game number one in just a second, 30-second timeout. What a match we got going here for Braun.
10 10 1 we're back here game number one of this best of three bronze medal match the winner's going for gold and right now at 10 10 1 this is anybody's game the odds tilt a little bit towards Jardim and Johns with that put away 11 10 1 game point remember this bronze match is going to be at two out of three games up to 11 winner advances to gold I'm just shocked at how many balls Ben Johns is getting. I gotta tell you, Mark, I'm really, really surprised at that strategy. And it looks to me like it's intentional. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, to be fair, you know, this did get, this game did go 12-10, right? It could have gone either way. So, yeah. you know, one of the calculations that the players have to make, that Newmans have to make is, you know, they went down 12-10. They lost that game 12-10. Was that because the strategy was wrong or the execution was wrong? We'll see what they do coming back. You know, Dave, one of the questions that we had from someone... Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Heather Olson Myers asks, Hey, Mark and Dave, would you guys mind talking about how pros select their partners for mixed doubles? Seems like there are a lot of teams that constantly change and some that stay consistent. Do sponsorships come into play? You want to you start with that one, Dave? Yeah, you know, a lot of us, we're, we've, we've booked our schedules a year in advance. And the way that partnerships happen, it's as simple as one player asking another player, would you like to play this tournament? Or a lot of times I'll say to somebody, do you want to play a series of tournaments? So a lot of the players like to know who they're playing with far in advance and like to lock in their schedules so they can organize their travel, and maybe they're gonna do clinics in the area as well, so we wanna know where we're going. And it's as simple as one player asking another player, and it's not always you know, the man asking the woman, you know, it's probably 50-50. And a lot of times, Mark, we players, we talk at tournaments, and we're talking about you know, maybe partnering up at this tournament for the following year. So a lot of times it's done in person, a lot of times it's done uh, via texting or messaging, and it's all about communication. And the sponsorships really don't come into play on it. Uh, the sponsors don't tell the players who they can and cannot play with. Right. I, I would add, um, I'd agree with everything you said there, Dave, and I would add also that sometimes it kind of happens by accident, right? So it could be the case that, you know, for, the, for example, the other day I was, uh, you know, Sean Rickard, I ran into him somewhere else in Arizona. He said, hey... Irina and Joey and I are playing together tomorrow. You know, do you want to come out and join with us? And all these pros, they are very often um, having these kind of rec games, these pickup games. And what will sometimes happen is all of a sudden you sort of catch lightning in a bottle. And uh, hey, two sure. players that just sort of happen to walk on the court together find that somehow they, uh, they're they a good fit. And so that can sometimes sure, lead to an unexpected partnership, uh, whether it's mixed doubles or same gender doubles. I tell players that sometimes struggle with getting partners is you can't be you can't be shy you can't be bashful if you want to play with somebody you know uh, and, and up, you could be rejected step up and ask the worst thing that can happen is the person can say well I'm already partnered for that tournament or I've already talked to some other people you can't be bashful don't be shy about it none of these f four players are shy out here right now going for the right to play in the gold medal match afterwards against Lucy Kovalova. Second server. And there again is that patent in Lindsay Newman forehand volley with one foot in the green and one foot in the blue. But Simone hit the wrong shot there. Instead of dicking it back cross court, which would buy her time to get back in position, she drove it hard and high to Lindsay's forehand. I mean, I think one of the other things that happens here, and Dave, I think, um, you know, a lot of the players at home can appreciate this as well is when you see one player who's poaching as much as Riley Newman is poaching, the message that that's sending to Johns and Jardim is that, oh, Riley wants the ball. So what we're going to do is we're not going to give him what he wants. We're going to give it to Lindsay instead. And so sometimes I hear what you're saying. You're right that um, with Lindsay parked where she was off the side of the court, had Simone gone cross court back to Riley. Um, you know, it, it would be relatively safe and out of trouble, but that psychology of not giving the opponents what they obviously want or appear to obviously want sometimes plays into it, which can force you to make the wrong choice. 
0-0-1 here in game two in the bronze medal match. The winner earns a berth in the gold medal match where Lucy and Matt Ooh. are waiting in the wings. And uh, still have a very one nice zero crowd one. here. I think we've lost about 10 degrees here in the last 20 minutes. But we have a lot of dedicated fans here. Folks that are watching this on our live stream, please a tweener. hit that share button. Oh, he actually got right, that. Almost. Hit that like button, hit that share button so so many more people can enjoy all this wonderful content. Yeah, it's great. We, uh, we're at 516, which is a great number. We were earlier, we were at... at a little miscommunication there uh, with the Newmans. Lindsay was leaning left thinking Ben was going to rip it at her backhand. And Riley stayed home and nobody covered the middle. There was no center fielder. 3-0-1 is the score. Second server. That time she had Ben leaning hard right and went behind him. Great shot. 3-0-2. So Mary Keene says, uh, can't hear the score. Mary, you don't need to hear the score. It's in the bottom left-hand side of your screen. You should be able to see. Uh-oh. It looks like he lost it in the lights. And he whiffed it, which we saw earlier today by Altoff Merchant at match point. Oh, not, did we? Not, not really? to embarrass him, but since he's a very good friend, I will embarrass him on match point. Match point up or down? Up. He had a... Uh, short lob to his forehand. He's lefty. And he whiffed oh, yeah. the overhead and the ball hit him in the shorts. <laughs> and that's where we say, oh. issues! Zero, four, one. Zero, four, one. Ah. Boy. That ball goes through the middle of the court and about five feet long. Well left by the Newmans. One, four, one. They put their first point on the board here in game number two after losing game number one. If you're just joining us, we've got uh, Riley Newman and Lindsay Newman taking on Simone Jardim and Ben Johns. The winner of this will go into the gold medal match right after this against Lucy Kovalova and Matt Wright. I think if Riley was wearing his Fitbit, he would notice that he's got about 13,000 steps in uh, one and a half games of pickleball, and that's hard to do if you tried. I couldn't get that climbing Camelback Mountain and back. Yeah, Riley Newman, definitely a mover out there. 4-1-1. Four, 4-1-1 one, one. Four, one, one is a score. Jardim, a deep serve to the backhand, creates an opportunity for oh, Johns. What a get by so isn't, Lindsay. I mean, to me, a lot of people will notice that great volley hit at the end, but I would argue it was the serve that set that up. One, one. One minute, players. It was the serve that led to the short return that opened up the down the line drive because the players were stacking, which created the opportunity to then uh, get that ball that's elevated a little bit they can put away. So isn't it amazing to me, Dave, I think how when you watch at the highest levels, how we're starting to see the serve play so much more of a factor, not necessarily always with speed, but as a deliberate shot to not win the point, but tilt the odds in the favor of the serving team. Uh, in this timeout, a little uh, terse communication amongst the sister and brother duo. Uh, but that's that's normal for all of us siblings. I can tell you, if I was playing with my brother, there would be a lot of terse conversations like that as well. This team, you have one timeout left. Third team, you have two timeouts left. Time's I think I heard five, Lindsay five, say five. that you're giving up on the play, and I certainly don't think that's accurate. Riley? Never gives up on anything, and I think I uh, lost his focus there. You don't see him miss many returns like that. 6-1-1, Six, one, one. Six, one, one, Simone Jardim. Trying Remember, to step on the gas here. Ben and Simone took game one uh, in a thrilling battle. If they take game two, they will capture this match and head on into the gold medal match, which is looking more likely by the minute. In case you're wondering, Jardim and Johns are the number one seeds in this tournament. The Newmans are the three seeds. 
Bryson Kovalova. Number two. I think Dave, uh, do you think we should just call that a Newman or a Lindsay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's such a patented move, right? We've got the Ernie. What She's amazes me is how many people give her that down the line shot to where she can do that. Riley did not see that ball clearly. I think it caught off the, clipped off the did top it clip of the, off net. the net. Yeah. You can see Ben with a little wry smile over there, knowing that when things are going well, things are going well. 8 1 2. Ben now feeling like he can unleash that serve a little bit up 8 1. Lindsay oh. with the opportunity to put it away hits a bit long. All right, uh, we're going to go a quick timeout as well, pay a few bills. We're going to come back for the end of game number two, perhaps. In just a moment, Mark Renison, Dave Weinbach, in May. People have this conception that pickleball, oh, that's an old person sport, but I don't think they realize how physically demanding it is with those quick bursts and long, grueling points. The first US Open, I found myself cramping in two different events. When you start cramping, it's too late. And when I first started playing, I wasn't ready for that. The biggest difference I feel on the court with Jigsaw products is I'm not cramping at all. It gives you that mental confidence that your body's going to hold up. Jigsaw products will provide a lot of value to you both on and off the court. It's no secret I lose so many electrolytes when I play. Eventually, I either start cramping or I run out of gas. Electrolyte Supreme gives me enough energy and hydration. They prevent cramps, and what's really important to me, they help me to recover quicker. I know I can push myself a little bit more. And we're back. Ben John's serving. 9-1-2. Jardim and John's a stranglehold on this match right now. Newman, Newman trying to... Give one last gasp. They get the side out. Good timeout. Here we go. One nine one. One nine one. Oh. See now that's a situation mark <laughs> where. He was because so far Riley, back. Riley he was, was so six feet behind one, the baseline. Uh-oh. <laughs> he they got that up high to Lindsay's forehand as she was just yeah. sitting on it, and all she had to do was pronate that wrist down. And that's a referee timeout now. Sorry about that. Score is 9-2. Okay, quick referee timeout. We're going to be back in a second with more here from game number two. All right, we're back on a beautiful but a little bit chilly night here at the Mesa Tennis Center. Reminder, there's lots of great action coming up after this match. We're going to see the gold medal final in the pro mixed doubles. Nine, two, are they going to recall that score? Two, nine, one. Yeah, don't worry, Donna. The scoreboard will come back. I tell, well, I'll let you know. It's two nine one, and uh, the scoreboard's now back. There you go. Uh oh. No. Oh. No. 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 He's gonna get it. What incredible defense! I mean, Ben hit those two balls as hard as he possibly could. Wow. Oh. Incredible defense, but there's another example of Simone 
getting it down the line to Lindsay. I think she has to be really cautious of that when Lindsay's on the left side of the court. 3-9-2. Great that hands side by out. Simone there. Terrific recovery. They were totally out of position. And Simone on maximum stretch on that two-handed backhand. 9-3-1. Oh, that ball didn't bounce up. It was a great return by Lindsay. Ben, you know, puts a lot of topspin on that serve. And sometimes, Mark, you get a strange bounce depending on what the ball lands on, a hole or what part of the ball. And Lindsay recovered very well there. Good eye from Newman there. Neil was asking why there's a referee timeout. In the PPA events, once 11 points have been reached in any particular game, there's going to be a quick referee timeout. It's a way for us to give a little love to the sponsors who help make this event and this tour possible. So good thing we've got so many great commercials for you to enjoy. But uh, it is something, Dave, I think with the, the, the referee timeout at 11, the TV timeout, um, interesting to see as the tour progresses how players start to incorporate that, knowing that timeout's coming into their strategy around when they take timeouts. Or I think you're going to see teams save timeouts knowing that that's coming. Yeah, kind of like the two-minute warning in mm -hmm. American football. Or like in NCAA basketball, we have a four, every four minutes there's a TV timeout. There you go. That ball clipped the line. And coaches aren't going to burn a timeout with four minutes and five seconds left in the game when they know, like at the four-minute mark four in yeah. a college basketball game, there's a long yeah. TV timeout coming. I think, look, this is a this is a new feature, and this is the first uh, stop in the PPA Tour. So I think right now a lot of the players are still getting accustomed to it. Uh, they still look caught off guard, but I think by the time we get to the next Nine, four, event, one. I think yeah. they'll be quite yeah. attentive. Meanwhile, right now, Johns and Jardim need to be attentive to keep their lead here at 9 4 one that is a tough angle, and here comes the overhead. Ooh, Simone hit that ball. Would have gone out, I think, a little wide. It definitely would have been out. But better, better safe than sorry. R Riley was so out of position that Simone knew she had a winner there. All right, we've got a match point here to go to the gold. Ben clips the top of the net. He's going to try that over again. 10-4-1. Match point. 10-4-1. Ball goes just a little bit wide. Simone Jardim. Match point. No, that's way out. That ball goes just long. That's a 10-4-2 uh, shot. <laughs> I don't think if it was 4-8, he would have hit that shot. That's an area of Riley's game that he's really, really improved on. This is forehand cross-court dink. Riley Newman knows if he is going to try that offensive lob, he's got to get that ball further to the left away from Ben Johns. He's too quick, too tall, and he's got too much of an overhead. But if he can get his paddle on, especially on his forehand side, that's going to be trouble. He's going to get this. Trouble. Ooh. Mm, I thought that ball was long. It's tough to see. And with that side out, we've got another match point here for the right to go for the gold. Jardim hits the net. This is Jared Oman saying, how do you not love the Newman? So scrappy. Look at how many match points they've saved. They're going to have to save another one here if they want to keep playing.
And there it is. And there it is. Jardim and Johns take down Riley and Lindsey Newman. Two straight games. They're going to go to play for gold against Lucy Kovalova and Matt Wright. And that's coming up right after this. Give it up for Ben and Simone. Congratulations to the Newmans. They get third place, $1,200 bronze medals. So you're going to want to stay close. Let your friends know this match is coming up. It's not going to be very long. More here coming up from Pro Pickleball Association Grand Slam Qualifier in Mesa, Arizona. to win a Lucy Kovalova and a Matt Wright signed paddle. Come on now, that's cool. Real cool.
Well, Pickle fans, you've made it. You've made it to the gold medal match, and so has Matt, Lucy, Simone, and Ben. As a result, you guys in the bleachers, and only you guys in the bleachers, get a chance for more, for more t-shirts. But you have to be, you have to be down on this far side. It's gonna look weird here, but it's gonna look great on the live feed. As Connor's saying, we need to get everybody down on this side. And then, whichever team is on this side, that's the one you root for. That seems fair, right? For the live stream. I mean, come on guys, it's television. It's all produced. Nothing is real anymore. My feelings about pickleball are real, that's for sure, Danny. Look on the live stream right now. Team competing hard from start to finish, tip to tail. Really, in this case, we see her battling head to head against Kurova earlier on, setting up that around the post opportunity. 
such a crafty player. There's nothing really Simone can't do. And you see here that counterattack against Matt Wright, one of the best defenders in the game. There's another ATP opportunity. Such great pickleball all day from all the competitors out here. Ben Johns, we see finishing the point with that high two-handed backhand put away. Let's take a look right now at who Ben and Simone will be playing. Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova. No strangers to Jardim and Johns. Got a great combination of power pickleball plus being able to soften things up when the time calls for it. Really looking for these players to speed things up. Lucy Kovalova, especially on that backhand side, loves to counterattack with it. That's gonna be something we can look forward to in this match, as well as the overhead smash from Mr. Wright. One of the best in the business. We're going to be in for a treat here. Not sure who's going to come out on top. We've got great action coming up live here from the Pro Pickleball Association Grand Slam Qualifier here in Mesa, Arizona. Take a look at the players warming up their serves, returns, and third shots. This is something that you at home can do, whether or not you hit the ball as hard as these four. These first three shots are so critical. How you play those first couple shots really influence how the rest of the point unfolds. So these players are going to make sure that they are at 100% when they're hitting these balls. As the players go through the final stages of this warm-up, this is a great time to encourage you to hit that share button. I'm cold looking at that dude. We'd love to get it up to 600 tonight on this beautiful Friday night. A little bit of a chilly Friday night here in Mesa. So if you like what you're seeing so far here from the team at Pro Pickleball Media, then hit that share button. Give other people a chance to either see pickleball for the first time or enjoy it even more than they already do. So we're going to have a real treat for a match here tonight. Pickleball fans, we're here. Look at all this great PPA swag coming out for you fans of pickleball. All right, as the fans get a few more, some PPA shirts to get ready for the match Grand coming up slam. and the referees get their final instructions, Day we're going to... I'm going to introduce I'm going to introduce my co-commentator the my ride or die partner here for this gold medal mixed doubles match man who's no stranger to gold medals himself including the one he got earlier today in the senior pro mixed doubles match Mr. Dave Weinbach is here with us in the broadcast booth. Dave, welcome back again. 
great to be here. Uh, we're in for a treat here in this gold medal match. No surprise, we have the one seed of Simone and Ben taking on the two seed of Lucy and Matt. They met about an hour and a half earlier uh, today. And uh, Matt and Lucy pulled that out to earn a berth in the gold medal. And as we just witnessed, uh, Simone and Ben taking out the Newmans in the bronze medal match to force this gold medal match. And here we go, Mark. All right, we're underway. 0-0-2, Simone Jardim serving two, Lucy Kovalova. And already the ball has hit the line three times. <laughs> but who's counting? Matt Wright gets his first touch, and it's an effective one. You know, normally Ben tries to attack that ball back. That's the fifth or sixth one I've seen try to block it back, and he's missed him just about all in the net on that backhand side. I'm gonna try to watch, keep an eye on that. That when Matt speeds it up to him, see if he tries to punch it back or just block it. All right, as we get going into this match here, I want to say hi to a few people who are watching right now. Let's see where we uh, left off. Okay. I want to say hi to Ernesto Fajardo, fellow Canadian watching this right now, as well as Marius Mitrofan. Frank Anthony Davis is watching. Chris Wolf out of Atlanta is watching, as well as John Sperling. Stephanie Lane, Corinne Carr, a lot of big names in pickleball. The here Nashville watching, yes. Queen, welcome to the Nashville Queen. Wish you guys were here, Steph. Zero one one. Brandon Swanson is watching, as well as Stacy Townsend. I'm sure she's at home working on her pickleball alphabet project that's going on. Remember, folks, as you take in this live action, please click on that share button and hit that like button so more people can enjoy this tremendous one, one, live action. All right, if you're just joining us right now, Mark Renison alongside Dave Weinbach here watching this pro mixed doubles gold medal match happening here. It's about 7 o'clock local time. 1-1-1. One, 1-1-1. One, one. One, one, one. You know, that's two returns in a row from John's into the net, and he's Look looking at, at his preview. paddle. Two, one, one. Like something's wrong with the that's paddle. That's what I do when I miss a shot, too. Look <laughs> at the paddle. <laughs> Second you know, my phone says it's 63 degrees, but I think the real feel is about 53 two, one, two. right now. We lost our son about a half hour ago. It's still a joyous evening here at the Mesa Tennis Center at the inaugural wow. Professional Pickleball Association, the PPA's event here one, two, one. outside of Phoenix, Arizona in Mesa, right at the base of the Superstition Mountains. Just a terrific scenic venue for our first tournament here, Mark. Yeah, it is a really terrific spot and not only a beautiful venue to, for the players to play on, but also uh, top quality team putting it together, the PPA team, all the volunteers, all the referees, uh, the staff that have done this really make this a, a great first event for the PPA. Of which you are a member, Dave. Oh, yes. You know, something that I think you're going to see mostly in this match, Mark, is I think you're going to see a lot of cross-court forehand dink wars with Simone and Lucy, and I have to give a slight edge there to Simone in that particular um, matchup. If that indeed two, two, two. ends up happening, will we get that pattern? And we'll see. Last match, Ben Johns really inserted himself very aggressively in that match against the Newmans, and I don't know what percentage of shots he hit versus Simone, but I'm going to say it was close to 80-20. And when you let one of the best players in the world get that many shots, that is going to inhibit your chances of a victory. Yeah, that's a terrific example of not only the tremendously quick hands of Ben, but the powerful hands. I've said this publicly before, Mark. I think Ben Johns has the best combination 
of quick hands and powerful hands in the entire sport. And you see that guy on the other side of the net with a blue shirt and white shorts? His name's Matt Wright. I would say he has the second best combination in the entire game of quick hands and, well, power and right nice on example. cue. There's a nice example of it right there. Matt Wright putting away that high ball on the forehand side. 2-2-2 two, two, two is the score here. A lot of spin on that return of serve from Wright. Wow. That's a situation where Ben so, moved too early. So is that the read there? Is that Lucy sees that that move that Ben's going towards? Yeah, she, she held the shot as long as she possibly could to see if he was going to commit one way or the other. And he committed middle, and she went behind him. As Matt commented as he hit it, oh, that was late, meaning the ball got behind him, and he got the ball late. And when that happens, you're almost always going to miss that ball wide to your left when you get it late on your backhand side. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Again, a lot of backspin on that return of serve, making it tougher for Wright and Kovalova to hit the kind of third shot they want. Oh, you know what? That ball would have gone over, too. Ben Johns hits the tweener directly into the backside of Simone Jardim. Not quite what he had in mind. <clears throat> <laughs> when that happened, Simone went, ooh! <laughs> oh my gosh, what a stretch by Ben. That ball looked like it was behind that's a, him. That's a good example of that. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a good example of the strength of John's is being on the reach yet still being so solid to receive that ball with speed. That was an incredible ball. back with control. I thought, I mean, Lucy thought she had a winner there. Uh-oh. That ball oh, nearly that. catches the line just out wide. If you're just joining us, 570 view. Be sure to hit that share button. We'd love to get this over 600. Mark Renison and Dave Weinbach bringing you the gold medal final Boy. between Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova and Simone Jardim, Ben Johns. No strangers to being in the gold medal match, any of them. Four, three, one. one thing to keep an eye on this match, Mark, is Right now, Matt is kind of letting Lucy play her side, and he's not inserting himself in the match as much as John's is. So let's see if Matt Wright tries to take over a little bit more and gets a little bit more aggressive, like what we're seeing from John's. I think if he doesn't do that, I think they're going to be in big trouble in this matchup. Oh, I think that ball caught the last eighth of the line. been a long day for these players you know the senior mix we started at 8 o'clock this morning this uh, group here this event started at 10 a.m. and it is now 7 12 local time here here in the mountain time zone in beautiful Mesa Arizona just an east just east of Phoenix by about 16 miles it's just a reminder that uh that Johns and Jardim are coming out of the loser's bracket. So that will mean, since Kovalova and Wright, since they're undefended, uh, undefeated, I should say, if Johns and Jardim are able to win this game, best two out of three, they're going to play one more game, uh, a race to 15. And earlier, when Kovalova and Wright, they were the ones who knocked out Jardim and Johns from the main draw in a victory that went 7-11, uh, 11-4, 11 11-9. So I think, Dave, it's fair to say that this is likely to be a pretty tight affair out here. Out. I think uh, John wants that one back. He drove it high to the right forehand, and that is a recipe for disaster. Three, six, one. Three, six, one is a score. Lucy serves to Simone. And uh, let's take a second and talk about these partnerships, Mark, because we all know Matt and Lucy uh, have always played together since they started playing pickleball, and uh, they have no plans to uh, dissolve this partnership. And uh, Ben and Simone is a recent partnership that started towards the end of last year, and they plan to play all of these PPA events together as well as the majors. 
So uh, you could, this is a matchup that uh, we could see in the uh, gold medal match and winner's brackets finals a lot. Oh, oh terrific cover by Simone there. In preparing for this Seven tournament and taking a look at the draws and taking a look at the partnerships that are lined up, there were a lot of exciting uh, matchups to me. Some players that we haven't seen together before. You know that example um, earlier of Tyson McGuffin and Riley Newman. We're going to see them play together. And that's a new partnership on the men's side. Seven, three, and uh, yeah, it's just so exciting yeah, to see. Yeah, in fact, they just won the Hawaiian Open that's right. about a month ago, beating uh, Yates and Johns in the gold medal match. It's uh, no easy feat. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Matt Wright tries Boy. the slippery down the line. Eight, three, TV sort of I think around the that post. missed by a ball. But just by one ball. Okay, we're going to take a look. We're going to go measure it. We'll be back in a moment. More here from the PPA Grand Slam Qualifier here in Mesa, Arizona. Stay close. The day before I start match day in pickleball, I make sure I have all my electrolytes. I would use the normal sports drinks that I grew up using. I started taking Jigsaw Electrolytes. It's been beneficial and helped my game improve a lot. I know that throughout the day, I'm gonna be fine for those 12 to 14 hours if it takes that long. My body's gonna hold up. So that was great, not having to worry about one more thing besides just playing pickleball. And we're back live here, Mark Renison alongside Dave Weinbach here in Mesa. In on we're at the Pro Pickleball two. Association Grand Slam Qualifier. Eight, three, two. Ooh, that third clips the net. I didn't think Simone had to hit that shot. I thought that ball from right was going long. May have been a little bit of a misjudgment there. And then she hesitated and didn't really commit to the shot. 3-8-1 three, one. Three, one is a score, right? Kovalova. Point. Not much of a bounce off that ball. You were saying earlier, Dave, that sometimes Four, eight, one. you don't always get a consistent bounce. And so that's one of the things that is interesting about pickleball, and especially the Dura 40. It is the kind of ball that sort of changes shape uh, a little bit as time goes on. And we talked about how uh, it can warm up, it can cool down, and so it really brings an interesting dynamic to the sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once in a while we see a ball that bounces kind of right in the middle of one of these little holes on the ball, and it just doesn't seem to come up. Amazingly, that doesn't happen very often. When you think about how many balls, little holes are on these balls. 841, Simone Jardim. Of course, we are using the Dura Fast 40 ball. It is the official ball of the Professional Pickleball Association made by Onyx Sports. 941. That's going to set wide. Around the post opportunity, point. but it's, that's because the ball is too wide. It's going to be a point. That sets up game point here 10 4 1. Simone Jardim. Can take an early lead here in this gold medal match. I personally, uh, Mark, do not understand the need from these players to challenge Ben Johns. I'm absolutely surprised today. This is the fourth match I've seen. Ben and Simone play, and, and it's amazing to me how these players want to challenge well, I mean, Ben's hands. He's got the best hands in the game. Point. The ball's game. just out, and that's going to be game number one that goes to Jardim and Johns. We're going to take a quick break. The players are going to talk about their strategy, and we're going to be back with more here. Game number two. Pro Pickleball Association Grand Slam Qualifier in Mesa, Arizona.
in to get less than 20% of the shots. And any ones he got, he would have to really hunt down. And welcome back to Championship Court here at the Mesa Tennis Center. Mark Renison alongside Dave the Badger Wineback, and we are watching gold medal pickleball here. This is the championship match between Lucy Kovalova and Matt Wright, and Simone Jardim and Ben Johns, who just won game number one in this race to three. And Mike McGuire from the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area has joined us. Good to have you with us, Mike. Please, uh, folks, as you're watching, click that share button and that like button so more people can enjoy all this great action here from the inaugural PPA event in the Mesa Tennis Center. Side out. Here's a side out. Simone Jardim is going to take over serving duties. She's going to deliver here yeah, to one. Kovalova on this chilly Friday night. Oh, my God. What a stretch. Oh, unbelievable. Johns jumps the corner, and while they try to retrieve that ball oh. from the stands, I can remind you about some of the important sponsors we have that help to make this tournament possible. Onyx Pickleball, Vulcan, one, zero, Paddle Tick, C&D Pickleball Nets, and we'll tell you about a few more in a moment. We appreciate the comments about the quality of the uh, video. It's from Carl Schmitz and the team at Pro Pickleball Media, as well as Holy. Steve Taylor and Digital Spatula. And uh, the Logitech equipment that they use to bring this crystal clear video and audio. Ben Johns just gets handcuffed on that forehand hip side. Lucy Kovalova always happy to swing away on that two-handed backhand. Boy, a lot of slice and side spin on that right Backhand return to Hardin. It makes that third shot so much tougher. Another great stab volley by Johns. That's what I'm talking about, Mark, uh, to see if Matt does more of that. I think he's going to have to play it more aggressively for them to win this match. She'll get this. That ball handcuffs right. Another good location. That right takes over serving 0 2 2 is the score. After Jardim and Johns win game number one. Johns and Jardim coming out of the back draw, so even if they do manage to win this match, they're going to have to win another run to 15 to take home the gold and the $5,000 in prize money. That's a rare backhand miss hit into the net by, by Matt Wright. He usually loves that backhand slice cross court. One of his best shots. And this is what I thought we'd see more of, quite honestly, Mark Renison, is uh, these cross court uh, forehand battles with Simone and Lucy. And where the guys try to insert themselves into the match. Right. Oh. Wright can't call that ball out, not quite sure. Good sportsmanship all around. It was pretty close, tough to call. Deceptive little Three, shot zero, there. And from our position on the court, pretty tough to see whether that ball hits the line or not. Folks, if you can't definitively call the ball out, it is in. You have Boy. to have direct knowledge to be able to call that ball out and be sure. Otherwise, the ball is in. Four, zero, one. Not sure what that shout was. <laughs> you know what? People get fired up here, Dave. Oh, that's going to sell a well. Grand Slam qualifier, they get excited. That's an example of right. ben, ben Johns makes you go Five, for a one. lot. And Matt could have easily put that ball three feet into the court, probably for a winner. But Ben makes you go for more than what you need to. That's what great players do. 5-0-1, Johns. And Jardim applying a lot of pressure. Got to think there's going to be a timeout here if Boy. they miss that ball, which they did. And there's the timeout. The All right, we're going to take a quick Four hydration one. break as well, powered by Jigsaw Health. We'll be back in a moment with more of game number two. Well, between, that, between that 
guy that yelled and what sounded like a bunch of cats over there. <laughs> well, I couldn't tell who yelled. I almost thought it was Matt. I did too for a second. It was weird. It might have been. Zero one, Jardim serves to Kovalova. They're trying to extend their lead here. Miss best two out of three game. Oh, no That's a kitchen violation. Both referees Four. called at the same time. And a quick shout out to our two referees, uh, Peter and Don. Thanks to all the great referees and Seven, volunteers that have joined us this week, Mark, because these tournaments could not happen without them. And the players really appreciate everything they do. And that ball's coming Boy. right into the broadcast booth. I'm hearing from the uh, producer in the truck that we are now down to 61 degrees with a three mile an hour wind. Also, we're over 600 viewers, which is amazing. Do you think we can get it up to 700, Dave? Let's do this. If we get to 700, will you buy me a beer? I will buy you three beers. All right, folks, but to you do heard, that, you heard to do that, we need people to go out and click that share button so more people can enjoy all this great action here in the gold medal match here at the first inaugural PPA tournament in Mesa, Arizona. Oh, uh, great hands by Matt Wright. All right, if that's a great jumping the corner. Both Jardim and Johns jumped the corner there. I think they were okay on both sides. Well, you heard it straight from the mouth of the Badger. If you want to get your friendly neighborhood broadcaster a beer or three, let's see if we can get those uh, numbers up to 700. Hit that share button as Ben serves at 902. Nice deep volley by Lucy there. That is not coming back. I was going to say, uh, Dave. We have a couple more sponsors that we want to thank. Pickleball Central, Selkirk Sport, Third Shot Sports, Pro Kennex, K-Swiss, Creamy's Ice Cream, Durafast 40, and Jigsaw Health for helping to make this tournament and the whole PPA Tour such a great part of pickleball. Lucy Kovalova Lucy. takes care of business with that high forehand volley. Gets the ball down into the dirt where it's almost impossible One, to return. Nine, Speaking of both these refs, they are both hell out of Nashville, Tennessee. The pickleball hotbed that it is. Oh, I think Matt hit an out ball there. All right, so Beth, oh, we'll talk about this after, maybe in game number three. Oh, you're predicting a game three. Well, you know, if we go to 15, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't like to chat too much when uh, we're getting close to game point or match point. So what happens, Mark, if Simone and Ben do win Nine, the one, uh, best two out of three games here in this gold medal match? Point. Did you ask me what happens? Yes. Oh, there's going to be a race. One minute. Okay, there's going to be a quick timeout here. We're going to stay with this while we uh, describe what's going to happen here. And uh, so, Dave, if uh, this goes to a, if Jardim and Johns are able to win this match, that will only be the first loss for Kovalova and Wright. And so that means uh, someone's got to lose another game to be knocked into silver. So they're going to play one game to 15, a race to 15. First person to get, first team to get to 15, winning by two, is going to take home the gold and $5,000. And in case you're wondering, the, the teams will switch sides at eight points in that tiebreaker. So no team has any advantage, disadvantage due to lighting or wind or sun in that tiebreaker. So that's important to know. All right. Rob Noonan says he's going to hit share and encourage other people to do because he wants the Badger to buy. We're up to 637, Dave. We're this, creeping our way to seven. Oh, 639. These commentators have been busy Come on, on guys. these mics. Since 10 a.m., they deserve. Let's get us to 700, they, they, folks. They deserve some refreshments. 
Larry says, congrats on your goal today, Dave. Okay, 10-1-2. Oh, thank, thanks, Larry. Match point here. Simone Jardim to Matt Wright. Ben Johns goes with the firepower, but Lucy defends well. And that's a side out. One ten one. One ten one. And I gotta think right now that Lucy and Matt trying to put together something positive here. It looked like Lucy changed her mind at the last second there and didn't really commit to that shot, and that's why she hit it about five feet too high. Jardine gets that ball in a little bit too tight to her body. Can't get it back over the net. Trying to do something constructive here, Kovalova and Wright. 2-10-2. Of course, uh, Lucy and Simone teamed up for a gold yesterday in the women's doubles. And Matt and Ben are teaming up tomorrow in the men's pro doubles. And there are so many great teams tomorrow. I think we have 34 teams in our men's pro doubles tomorrow. I'm teaming up with the fellow Canadian of yours, Steve Deacon. Steve so Deacon, always look forward to playing with the Beaver Deacon, we call him. Well, that's not a ball that is an attackable ball. I think Ben needs to be a little bit more patient, wait for the right one. Of course, when it's 10-1, you can do anything you want to do. 10-2-2, Ben John serving match point again, and that looks like it oh, just barely caught the line. Jardiman John's working so hard to finish off this match. Lucy Kovalova dodges that ball, doesn't even touch the ponytail. That ball lands out of bounds, and there's going to be a side out. Lucy gets to serve again. 2 10 1. 2 10 1. Second server. That ball just a little bit too low. Would have been a tough ball for Ben to handle. Dipping. 2-10-2. 2-10-2. Oh, right. Fire <laughs> it. Wait for the hard serve down the middle at 2-10. Oh, right, yeah. again. He's, he's really wearing down the tape on both the left and right side of the court with that little backhand poke. I really think at this point, uh, Matt and Lucy are looking ahead uh, to the um, tie-breaking game to 15. And I don't think they want to give uh, away too much energy here in this game, uh, both mental and physical energy. People don't realize, Mark, how much it takes out of you mentally when you play these matches. You know, there's so many decisions that you have to make. Wow. Oh, that was a smart decision by Wright to put that ball into the first row of the bleachers. Great angle by him. Ben John's going to try to close it out here with a serve. Tough return. Honestly, I thought we'd see more of this, Mark, in this match. Ben John's gets the ball off the chest. No, not even an apology from Lucy. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a side out, and again, Kovalova, the right? They're hanging tough here as we've got 671 people Two watching. All Two these players are, are good friends. You know, one of the real unique things, Mark, that in pickleball is on the court, we all want to destroy each other, and we all compete really hard. But off the court, you know, everybody's friends. We all hang out in the players' uh, lounge in the VIP area and tell stories and uh, talk about life and even non a lot of non-pickleball stuff. And... In fact, right before this match, uh, oh, yeah. well, about an hour and a half ago, we the four of us, four of these guys, and and us, and okay, we're talking on. back there about non pickleball things. There's another match point here for Johns and Jardim, looking to send this to a decisive 15 point tiebreaker. Uh oh. Matt Wright, Lucy Kolov, Kovalova not going away, making them work for it. We were talking the other day watching Lucy, how she loves to step to her right, and she unloads on that two-handed backhand, which of course is her favorite shot to hit, and there's a perfect example of it. When she steps to her right, there's really right. no way anybody and can get the ball to her forehand. All right, don't go anywhere because 
this is the only the first loss of the day for Kovalova and Wright. So guess what? This event is going the distance. There's going to be a race to 15 for the gold medal match, for the gold medal, and for the $5,000 in prize money. Dave, we got to 682. I bet you when we come back for the conclusion of this, we can hit that 700 mark and we can get Mia yeah, a little beverage back here. First ever PPA gold medal. Let all your friends know that they are going to see Make sure a real heavyweight battle here coming up in this race to 15. Look at that. Get some right in the. Could win a Matt and Lucy sign paddle. All right, we're going to go to a quick break. We're going to be back. And when we do return, the race to 15 for $5,000. Stay close. And we're back live, 0 2 in this race to 15. Lucy Kovalova, Matt Wright. 
battling with Ben Johns and Simone Jardim. First team to get to 15 points is going to win the gold medal. $5,000 here at this first stop on the PPA Tour here in Mesa, Arizona. I'm your host, Mark Renison, alongside Dave Weinbach, who's been with me throughout this match. And Dave, any predictions for, uh, not necessarily who's gonna come out on top, but uh, any adjustments that we're gonna see from either team? Well, as we said earlier, I think if Matt doesn't get a little more active, and a little bit more uh, aggressive and leaning to his right and trying to capture some more forehand balls. I think it's going to be really tough for them. I, d I didn't hear a call there. Simone put up her hand, called that ball out. Okay. She got a little bit lucky. Well, luck or skill, I'm not really sure, but that ball caught off the top of the net. I have to give a slight edge to Ben and Simone because it, it seems to me that Ben is inserting himself a lot more uh, than Matt. Of course, he is uh, less than half of Matt Wright's that's age. Right. Let's not forget. That's right, that's right. Amazing what these players, that ball catches the top of the net and goes out. And uh, Dave, I just want you to take a quick little peek over at the number of viewers that we've got going right now. Where are we at, Mark? There's no one. We need to get to 700. 700, but you know what? We just came back after that little commercial break, right? The players had a rest to get set for this match, so we're trying to get to 700 right now. Dave and I have a little uh, incentive program going. Meanwhile, back to the match, and we see great dinking here from these players, not just power players by any stretch. Yeah, this is a part of uh, Lucy's game that has seen tremendous improvement in the last year as her, her dinking, uh, specifically her forehand cross court. There we saw a lob serve from Matt, which I like to switch up serves. I like to change pace. I like to change height. I like to change up the location. Uh, one of the phrases I use a lot, Mark, in pickleball is don't be a predictable player. Yeah, good idea to keep your opponents guessing. It gives them one more thing to worry about if they don't know what's coming. Ben, we know what's coming there when Ben John gets a high forehand. He's gonna put that down and put that away hard. Couple comments we saw out here. Someone was asking earlier about the two referees and no line judges. Uh, the decision was made to have these two refs here. One who uh, operates the, sort of runs the show and the other, in this case, Don Stanley, who's can take care of kitchen violations. And as for the no line judges, these pros, A, trust each other. Uh, as you were saying, Dave, before, there's personal relationships as well as these professional ones. And two, Oi. I was talking with Jennifer Dawson earlier, uh, one of the senior pro players out here, and she was saying, she was agreeing with me um, that these but players are one. so used to seeing balls travel at these speeds, this close to the line, with this much spin, is that very often, um, sometimes the line judges uh, may not have as much experience seeing that kind of ball being You know, hit. We, we really feel, Mark, that we can call the lines, we meaning the players, mm -hmm. can call the lines much more efficiently than the lines judges. And that's because we're tracking the ball better. We're used to the pace and the speed, as you referenced. And we just made a decision, uh, we meaning the PPA, to not have lines judges. And uh, today it's worked out really well. He might catch up to this. That ball still is just a little bit long. Once again, Ben Johns shows us why he's one of the best in the business when it comes to tracking down balls. Such a great shot that our DJ, DJ Pickles, just could barely contain himself over here. Really impressive play early on here in this race to 15. That ball catches the top of the net. And that's gonna be a point for Kovalova and Wright. 1-3-1 one, one. One, one is the score. If you like this match, be sure to hit share. Let your friends know so they can see some of it. Ben John's misfire is off there. And uh, tomorrow, you're going to want to watch the live streaming as well. We've got men's pro and senior pro doubles is happening. Tough? Is it tough to see? As well as we've Matt. got the singles on Sunday. Two, three, one. I think Matt was just referring to the... It's tough to see and with the, some of these uh, lower lights here at the Mesa, Mesa Tennis Center. Second server. That ball lands in the court. 
Two, three, two. Two, three, two is the score. Matt Wright serving. Mem reminder, this is a race to 15. First team to get mm. 15 will get the gold oh, yeah. medal and $5,000. And that one of these players is going to be adding to it because Simone and Lucy three, partnered two, up last night to win the gold medal and the cash. There's that, there's that return. Uh, talked about this yesterday. That short, low return can be really effective because it's not an attackable shot. Oh, look at the hands. Wow. Ben anticipated that hard backhand from Matt really well. He was sitting on it. That was an impressive display right there. Until you play against Matt Wright, you don't realize how hard he's hitting that when he slaps that backhand cross court. Lucy gets touched with the ball there. That's going to be a point for Jardim and Johns. We had a question from uh, Stefan Hans Maloney asking about the cameras and streaming. The cameras are provided by Logitech, and uh, the streaming service is provided by Carl Schmitz and the team over at Pro Pickleball Media. That's what you're watching this on, or you can find Pro Pickleball Media. You can always send them a message if you want more details than that. But I'm so happy, Dave, that the PPA and Pro Pickle Media are able to bring this great quality coverage not just for this one tournament, but for all seven on the PPA Tour. Yeah, I really wanted Carl involved. You know, he does a great job in bringing Steve on board. Steve Taylor uh, is just um, fantastic, a very talented individual, and we appreciate your expertise as well with all the great commentary that's gone all week long and the tremendous amount of folks that have been able to enjoy these live streams. I think that ball Lucy caught the line. Lucy Kovalova enjoyed that forehand winner from her partner, Matt Wright, right through the middle there. Ball catches inside the line, and that's going to be 2-5-1 two, one. Two, one with Kovalova serving. Reminder, this is a race to 15. Both teams have only lost one match today. Matt Wright and, and comes that, out on top there. And that's kind of what we're talking about, how I'd like to see Matt get a little bit more involved, meaning I want to see him insert himself more in what I call hunt down some more shots. Take a little pressure off of Lucy, who's gotten about 90% of the balls in this game. It's a lot of pressure, Mark, when you're the player that's getting picked on. And you and I have talked about the mentality of this. Uh... And I think it's very important for the partner to try to help out and support that because it's not just physically, it's mentally, it just wears you down when you're getting 90% of the shots. And Matt does such a good job of supporting Lucy mentally. I sure would like to see him get a little bit more involved with That's inserting uh, himself we did, in. We did see a great down the line lob over the backhand side of Ben Johns, shot that we saw uh, previous nationals oh look oh, at that mark look at where we are at with our viewers 728 let's keep going my, my, let's get to 800 no is that's not possible dave 800 all these people have to do is click that share button uh, that's gonna sail wide yeah ben still wow. ran it down just in case yeah thanks rochelle for the note but yeah we are indeed over 700 that means uh my parched mouth would be satisfied <laughs> sooner or later Thanks, all jokes aside, thanks to all of you for sharing thanks this for, um, I mean, it's a real testament to what you think about the quality that's broadcast from the team Five, three, over at Pro Pickleball and Digital Spatula and, and PPA for making this happen. So uh, thanks for doing that. Keep it up both tonight and tomorrow when we go into the men's Boy. doubles pro and Boy. senior pro events. Jennifer LaCour is happy about we got 700. Jennifer LaCour, Six, three, three. no stranger to the pickleball court. So cow, I call her. We miss you, Jen. Wish you were here. Oh, there's a terrific Boy. drive by Ben to the Matt Wright backhand. Matt was leaning middle, which is what he's been doing this entire match. Trying to that capture some good. of those middle balls with his forehand, and Ben caught him off guard there. 7-3-2 in this race to 15. Jennifer LaCour, we mentioned a second ago, a uh, real sort of pickleball royalty, Dave, but also the author of a really important book on the history of pickleball. 
If you're a pickleball aficionado and you're watching this and uh, it might be a book you'd be interested in picking up. Oh, great Lula. defense. I mean, Lucy hit two tremendous drives there. Simone Jardine picks up a couple good shots of her own against Kovalova. And Johns puts away that high overhead. So good at creating Thank you, uh, Gloria Koss, for joining us. I appreciate uh, <laughs> your comments. You know, it, we're having a lot of fun in this broadcast broadcast booth. It's been a it's been a long day for Mark Renison. I don't know how he has a voice left. He's been here since ten AM. <laughs> yeah, you know what? One of the things uh, we've had a few people ask me about that and uh, I'm fortunate because you know I make my living primarily through coaching pickleball, and when you're coaching all day on the court, you know eight or ten hours of speaking isn't uh, that uncommon, and usually you don't have the luxury of a microphone in your face seven. either. So it's been a real treat to be here uh, with you and the other people we've had in the booth. Seven, three, Let's two. get back to this match as Simone Jardim serves at seven three two in this race to fifteen and gold. All right, these players will switch sides now. It'll be eight. Three One minute. on the second serve. It's not a timeout. They'll just switch sides. They get about one minute. We'll do a quick shout out to some of the sponsors. Jigsaw Health, who not only provide great drinks for the players and the fans here, but also the DJ services here. Patrick Sullivan, the CEO of Jigsaw Health, is providing the music. Jurfast 40 is the official ball of the Pro Pickleball Association. Creamy's ice cream has been keeping people fed a little more often earlier today when it was hotter out than now. K Swiss shoes, incredibly comfortable footwear. Pro Connects paddles. We see a number of players out here using those. Third Shot Sports, that's me. Pickleball Central. For all your pickleball goods needs. Selkirk Sport, we are pickleball. CD Pickleball Nets, Paddle Tech, Vulcan, and Onyx, all partners that make it possible to run the best quality pickleball tournament we can here at the PPA. Back to the match now. This is the pattern I, I thought we'd see actually a lot more of. Whoa. Oh, and there is a Lucy Kovalova unleashed two-handed backhand. That is a backhand. wicked backhand she's got there. Got to watch out for it. Three, eight, one. Uh, Simone did a really good job of getting that ball down. She took a little pace off rolled it with some topspin and got the ball down. And that's a really good lesson for you viewers. In this game of pickleball, the location you hit the ball can oftentimes be much more important than the pace that you hit it with. Good location there from Kovalova. She saw the opening that was created when Ben Johns tried to jump the corner. Simone Jardim couldn't quite get there in time. If you're not sure uh, the score looks unfamiliar to you like we had from one viewer, it's because uh, in the beginning in the first match of this gold medal final uh, Jardim and Johns were able to win those two games but because Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova hadn't lost prior to this and it is a double elimination tournament this is now a race to 15 so what you're seeing in the score box is actually the third game which will be a race to 15. He, he is as good as anybody with that shot. He makes that look a lot harder than it is. That high backhand, to get that much power on that angle and put that ball away consistently like he does is very difficult shot, and he's the best in the game at it. All right, we're going to take a quick hydration break as well. We're going to go to a quick break. We're going to be back with more here in the final, final, final gold medal pro mix doubles. 
people have this conception that pickleball, oh, that's an old person sport, but I don't think they realize how physically demanding it is with those quick bursts and long, grueling points. The first US Open, I found myself cramping in two different events. When you start cramping, it's too late. And when I first started playing, I wasn't ready for that. The biggest difference I feel on the court with Jigsaw products is I'm not cramping at all. It gives you that mental confidence that your body's going to hold up. Jigsaw products will provide a lot of value to you both on and off the court. Six eight two is the score here in this race to fifteen and five thousand dollars. That's gonna be trouble. That ball stays Ooh, in. Lucy Kovalova doing a little support of her partner over there. Great Even move by Wright. Loves to roll that backhand. You know, we talked earlier about both. I think Ben and Matt have the best combination in the game of not only quick hands, but the most powerful hands in the game. And that's a really tough combination. And them partnering up tomorrow in the men's pro, uh, obviously they'll be the number one seed. And that's going to be a really, really tough team to challenge tomorrow. I really have them, Mark, as a heavy favorite to capture the gold medal tomorrow here on Men's Pro Doubles Day and Senior Men's Pro Doubles Day at the inaugural Professional Pickleball Association event here at the Mesa Tennis Center just east of downtown Phoenix. Oh, she waited as long as she could to, get, to generate that angle to go around the post but just couldn't quite execute that shot. All right, Tila Reinhardt is asking about the kitchen not being a more definitive color on the court they're playing. This is pretty standard. I mean, you, you're right, you have seen uh, other examples of courts that have different color palettes on them. Um, you know, different decisions are made for aesthetic reasons, sometimes for uh, broadcast reasons. That's a great down the line forehand from Lucy Kovalova. I mean, the players know wh where they are in the kitchen and when they aren't, and so that white line is enough of a def definitive Seven, one. Nine, but one. You're right, it's, uh, it's no accounting for taste. 791 Kovalova looks to drive that third shot and drop the fifth. Okay, let's see if one of the guys can kind of maybe take one extra step and get over there. Didn't Lucy, for that one. Lucy challenging Ben there. Wouldn't recommend that strategy. 792 is the score here. We're in a race to 15. That is a tough Wow. Tournament. Wow. What a block by Hardeen to get that ball down in the kitchen. That's a lot tougher than Simone just made that indicate. Well, I that think that I think that's that wide. Just wide. It looked wide to me. Point. Yeah, that buzz. I know not that rule. Ball is called. <laughs> ball is called wide. Everyone agreed that the ball was wide, not by much. Eight nine two. Eight nine two. Sarah Wiggins, who's asking which paddle the Onyx players are using. You can definitely find that out if you go to the Onyx website. I bet. And this is the signature paddles for Lucy and Matt. Ball catches side the top out. of the net, and there's a side out. Nine eight one. Nine eight one. Ben John serving. Race to fifteen. The winning team will get gold and five thousand dollars in prize Point. money. The silver medalists will split twenty five hundred dollars. And remember, folks, this is one. one game to fifteen, and you must win by two. This is what I thought Matt would try to do a little earlier tonight. He's waited until really the last, you know, portion of this match. 11-8-1. Ben rips the serve, catches the top of the net. They're going to replay that. It's like a little equipment malfunction for right. That's taken care of. 11-8-1. Yeah, smart decision by Lucy there. Ben tries to bait you into going behind him. Like that. 
right, right on cue. It's like they're they can hear us, Mark. So Ben, just to elaborate on what uh, Dave was talking about, Ben by leaning to the middle there, 12, 8, sort of suggesting that there was an opening down the line, but Ben's ready for it. So quick to get back. Twelve eight one. Jardim and Johns threatening here to pull away. Yep. Wow. And, that, and that, that ball uh, lands in. Dave, uh, can you look at our viewership numbers now, please? This is oh, awesome, good. Mark. This is awesome. We're I mean... Over 800. It's just fantastic that people are getting to watch such high-level pickleball. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this in the history of our game in pro mixed doubles. Look at that get. Oh, what a deceptive oh. shot. That ball lands Ooh. just inside the line. What a touch. Not much margin for error there, but Ben Johns finds just the place to put that ball. 13-8-2. Simone Jardim serving here. This is Race as good of a match, Mark, as I've ever seen in mixed doubles in pickleball. And I think you're going to see this match up a lot more in the next year. Lucy oh. can't quite get to that ball in time. This uh, is the chance here. We're now... Matt Wright did not come and poach that last shot because he thought that Johns was going to slice a backhand behind him. We have a championship point here. 14-8-2 championship point for the gold and $5,000. Jardim and Johns looking to close it out. Oh, oh it was there around the post. Oh. Johns and Jardim, they take gold at the inaugural PPA event here, the Grand Slam Qualifier yeah, in Mesa, gold Arizona. There gold medal and $5,000. Lucy Kovalova went for that around so the post good. shot to keep them alive, couldn't quite do it. What a match this was. Be sure to stay close right here. I'm gonna do, a, we're gonna do the encore presentation. I'm gonna do a quick chat with the players. A what a real treat. If you're not able to stay with us, be sure to come back tomorrow when we watch the men's the pro and senior pro event. What I'm an incredible match we just got to witness with the four best mixed doubles players we have in the game. What a fantastic event. And boy, uh, our broadcast booth had the best seat in the house right at center court behind the baseline. And boy, this center court is set up so nicely. Today, all day long, we had 400 plus people in these bleachers and probably another 150 plus people standing and sitting courtside here at the inaugural event in the PPA. Thank you all for joining us. What an incredible day of pickleball. Thank you to Carl Schmidt, Steve Taylor for bringing us all this live great action. We're going to do a quick medal ceremony here. And uh, we are going to sign off here but folks don't go far because tomorrow we are going to bring you the live action tomorrow is men's pro doubles day and senior pro doubles day the action is going to start at 8 a.m stay tuned all day on for this live action we are targeting the gold medal matches tomorrow to be starting at 4 p.m so folks Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us on all this great live action. For Carl Schmidt, Steve Taylor, Mark Rennison, this is Dave the Badger Weinbach signing off. Good night, everybody. First up, our bronze medalists coming in third, check for $1,200, Riley and Lindsay Newman. Yeah! Right there, a round of applause for our bronze medalists today.
our silver medalist today. Fought hard throughout the day with a check for $2,500. Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova. Congratulations to the two of you, as well as a check for $5,000. Ben's doubles tomorrow. Yeah, well, Thank you. I'm partnering up with the guy that I just beat. So. <laughs> and if someone has found a twenty dollar balance, please turn that into the referee desk. Or a fifteen. Thanks to the Fantastic. Only probably gonna get better. Well, we know that we're looking forward to watching tomorrow, and uh, be sure whether you're watching here in person with us or at home, uh, you let all your friends know about us. Share it on Facebook and elsewhere. And, uh, for everyone in the broadcast today and the PPA, I'm Mark Renison, and we will see you here tomorrow. As we uh, as we close out here today, uh, this is Carl talking from Pro Pickleball. I just wanted to, to, to say thanks to Steve Taylor from Digital Spatula, Mark Renison from Third Shot Sports, and I uh, also wanted to give a quick shout-out to...